Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So in this video, we're gonna look into unseen scenario questions again. And this one is slightly harder than the, the last one. Now let's try to solve it. Again, as mentioned in the previous video, for every unseen scenario question, our goal is to understand the question first before we move on into coding. Now, the question here is on the left. The 1D array days contain the names of the days of the week. A 2D array readings is used to store 24 temperature reading. And average temp is used to store the average temperature for each day of the week. And when you read question like that, it will be good to always write down the data replica, meaning you try to create some fake data to sort of visualize what each data structure here actually store. Days con is a 1D list that contain all the days of the week. The readings contain 24 temperature. So in this list here is a 2D list and each nested list is for the temperature of the day from hour number one to hour number 24. And it has seven array, seven array inside this. And another average temperature, it also only has seven values because it is the average temperature for all the temperatures here. By just drawing this data out, you can visualize what this question is all about already. And the position of any data state is the same in all three array. So if Wednesday is in the index four of days, meaning if Wednesday is index, in the, my example is three, then the third array here represent the temperature for Wednesday. And then we'll move on to the next one. Temperature reading are in one decimal place. I highlighted this because this show us what function we might need. And to do that, we actually need a round function. And so you just put a value here and this will give you a one decimal place value. This will be useful when we ask the user for temperature later. And temperature can only from negative 20 to 50. So that will be our validation. Now write a program that meets the following requirement. I'll read out all the requirements and then we'll start in co co go into coding very quickly. Input and validate the hourly temperature for one week. Meaning I need to input, I need the user to enter some temperature and the temperature should be placed into the readings list array. And calculate and store the average temperature for each day of the week. Meaning after you have gotten the temperature, you should calculate the average of these 24 temperatures and put them into an average one, like average temperature array and then convert, calculate the average temperature for the whole week means that you can add up all the average temperature for the days and then divide by seven to get the average temperature for the week. Convert all the average temperature to Fahrenheit using this formula, which we'll do later. I'll put the temperature and I'll put the average temperature in Celsius and in Fahrenheit for the whole week. So you must use pseudocode, blah, blah, blah. You can also use Python you do not need to create those stuff. So I have to repeat this because I will always put this up, but you do not need to create them, all right? And all data output must round it to one decimal point. Input and output must contain suitable message. Now, let's start to do populate the readings array. All right, oh, they say you will need to initialize and populate the array days. So that's something I need to do it. Populate the day array. So what I'm gonna do is that since days are already created, what I need to do is just to do this. I think the reason why they want you to do this is just so that you understand the whole question. So to save your time, I'm just gonna copy and paste all the way from one to seven. That's how you put a value into a 1D array, if you don't remember now. And then I'm just gonna do it from Tuesday all the way to Sunday and then oh so in this case they actually want you to populate it so but unless it's stated in usual question you shouldn't be required to do this so in essence what I'm doing here is just populate the array like that all right now let's move on to the first requirement input and validate the hourly temperature for one week meaning I want to enter temperature and put it here so what I'm gonna do is that I'm first gonna loop through the readings array using a for loop. For 
since each item in the reading to the array is a day, so I'll name my loop variable as day counter. Could to one and two. So number of days variable is not given, but of course we live on Earth. We know that it's seven. And then we get, uh, what we want to do next is that we're gonna ask the user to enter something, and we'll put it inside here. So what happen next is this. I will need a nested loop. So I'm just gonna do a four hour counter. I'll talk about why we need that in a while. From one to 24, because there are 24 hours. And before I populate it, I will first need to ask the user to enter something. So I'm just got the first output a message saying, please enter the temperature. And then I'm just gonna out input user temp. Basically user temp will be the variable that store the user input. And after that, I'm just gonna store this value into my readings to the array. So I'm just gonna do readings and day counter. So meaning we start from row one, column one, our counter will be equal to whatever the user have key in. But before that, I'm just gonna round it up to one decimal place because that's what the requirement actually asks us to do. And now it's just the input, but I haven't actually validate yet because validation means we wanna make sure that the user enters the data and it's only they are, we are only accepting negative 20 to 50. Therefore, the input user temp here, we need to add a while loop to complete it. Meaning, after we ask the user for an input, I'm gonna add one more line before I populate the reading survey. While user temp is less than negative 20 or the user temp is more than 50, what I'm gonna do is that I am going to ask the user to input again. I'm just gonna output, hey, please enter a suitable data. And you just copy the line over. And then we have an end while here. So this is how simple it is to actually check, uh, make a validation check. And with that, we have completed the first requirement. Now let's move on to the next one. Calculate and store the average temperature for each day of the week. Now let's assume that we have entered all 24 temperature, all right, for each day. And this array now should have been populated. So what I'm gonna do is that I am going to initialize a variable. No, uh, it's called averaging, if you look in the principle. Basically, before I go into this hour counter rate, I'm just gonna create a total temperature here. You'll know why I do this in a while. Meaning, um, for every temperature that the user has key in, I'm just gonna add it to total temperature for all 24 hours. It will be total temp plus round, well, my brain really have to fly very hard to avoid delay. Now, that's about it. <laughs> Do I like anything? That, so that's when I get all the total, the total temperature. I'm just gonna do next, our counter. So I have made a typo here. So what happened here is that after you got the total temperature for 24 hours, you will want to divide it by 24 to get the average temperature for the day. And to do that, it's very simple. Simply create a new variable called average temperature for day. And then you just do total temp divided by 24. And all values should be rounded. So I'm just gonna add round one here. And with that, I already have my average temperature for the day. But don't forget to put this value into our average temp array here. So because they say it's store. Now I'm just gonna do average temperature. Um, the index will be day counter. Will be equal to average temp for day. And with that, we have populated the average temperature for the day. That's it. <laughs> right, next, calculate the average temperature for the whole week. All right, before we solve this, let's end the for loop here because we have done everything now. Day counter, 
Not sure if I missed out anything, but it should be fine. Okay, now, average temperature for the whole week. So after this code have finished running, then we should have all seven average temperature. And they want the whole, the big picture, the average temperature for the entire week. Now, what I can do is just add up all the average temperature here. And I would have gotten the average temperature for the week. Now, let's do it. So for, I'm just going to loop through it seven times. Okay, day, I would just do day counter, start from one. Of course, there's a more efficient way to do it. Um, I just want to make it clear to everyone here. Day counter one to seven. And before that, I'm just going to add up the total average temperature. Average temperature, create it zero. And for each iteration, I'm just going to sum the temperature up. It will be equal to total, oops, AVG temp plus whatever that is inside the average temp array. And average temp, and the index will be day counter. And I'll just end the for loop. Next, day counter, and that's it. That will give me the total, but not the average. So if I want to find the, the average weak temperature, that's not a good name, but bear with me. So the AVG temp divided by seven. And with that, we have completed the next requirement, and that's pretty easy. Now convert all the average temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit using this formula. Output the average temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit for each day. Now what happened here is that I'm gonna find out again, um, first output the average temperature of the day, meaning I'll put this, 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 and that. And then I'm just gonna convert each value into Fahrenheit and again output it. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create another for loop again for day counter. I know I'm repeating myself, but I think this will make everything less confusing rather than I put everything inside this for loop here. So hope you understand that. All right, now for day one, day counter one to seven, I'm just gonna output the average temperature day counter, meaning I'll put the er normal average temperature first. And then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna output the average temperature day counter instead of just the Celsius. I'm gonna apply this formula. I'm gonna multiply it by nine over five plus 32. Of course, before that you can add a message, um, the Celsius temperature in Celsius is this amount and followed by a comma. And then next one you can say temperature in Fahrenheit is this amount and that's about it for the third require the fourth requirement sorry the fifth one we're doing two at a time and i'll put the overall average temperature in celsius and fahrenheit and that's not very hard right we can actually do it here just now we have calculated at average week temperature so now what they want is that i want to do this average week temperature i'm just going to print out a message is you put a comma here followed by this in Celsius. And next up, uh, you can just output everything the same way. But instead of printing this value, again, you apply the formula 5 plus 32. And with that, I believe that we have completed the question. And that's how you get um, as many points. I believe this will get you 13 to 15. Uh, but it should be 15 if I don't make any error here. Uh, by the way, remember to always put comment because this is in the marking scheme as well. But the goal of this video is not just to show you the the perfect answer, but rather is to show you the process which I use to solve this question because it's called unseen scenario question for a reason. You won't see this question again. So learning the process is important. And that's about it for the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next in the next video. Goodbye.